Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to inspire and motivate people to never give up on themselves or their dreams. We will chat with highly successful people from all walks of life and discuss what motivates and drives them to successfully attack life head on and never give up. Welcome to episode number 53 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is opportunity. Our quote of the day comes to us from Bobby Unser. Success is where preparation and opportunity meet. I'm very excited to bring you today's episode, as I met this gentleman through one of our previous guests. He has a great story, and the success he has already achieved in under 10 years in his field is very inspiring. He shares some great tidbits with us throughout the episode, and I'm honored to introduce Fred Graves. Fred, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living Podcast. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So the first question we ask everybody is, are you ready to make it happen? Absolutely. Every day I wake up ready to make things happen. I knew you would say that. The number one objective of our show is to both motivate and inspire our listeners. I wanted to ask if you had either a personal story about perseverance or perhaps a challenging time that tested you and you kept on going and didn't quit. Yeah, quite a few. Um, you know, that's, I feel like part of that, that's my journey. I feel like I've, I've been hit with a lot of different obstacles. I had to make some pretty strong choices on, uh, you know, I'm 36 years old. So I've, I've seen a lot of those challenging moments in my career. If you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit in the post interview, you talked about a, a story about making your first million at the age of 24. Would you mind sharing that a little bit? Yeah, you know, I you know I, I grew up with a family that we uh, ran heavy equipment and we subcontracted for FEMA. Um, and I guess my first my first uh, struggle in life was when my father was killed at the age of 14. Uh, you know, there's obviously the different emotions that you got to deal with, and I kind of just dealt with mine. With work, you know, I, I had a focus on being successful, and um, I was first semester of of tenth grade and sitting around a room with some buddies, and everybody's like, you know, what what college are you going to go to? What sports are you going to play? And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm just ready to go to work. And they're like, well, yeah, but you know, what college are you going to go to? Because you know, the mindset is in order to be successful, you got to have a degree, and you know, that part just wasn't making much sense to me. I I kind of wanted to run my own business, and it didn't make sense to have a professor teach me to, to how to run a business if he's not running a business. So I, you know, I kind of just took the theory in life. If someone's got something you want, you know, go do what they've done and you'll get it. And, uh, you know, that was definitely challenging to, to own your own business at 16, 17, 18, nine, you know, 18, 19 years of age. Um, when, you know, you're young in life and a lot of people look at you like you don't know what you're doing, but you know, I was a good listener and I, I was a good follower and uh, I followed people that had what I wanted. And like you said, at the age of 24, I, I made my first million and I, I thought I had things figured out. You know, you, when you start to have a little success, you start to, you know, puff your chest up a little bit and, and think you got it figured out. And uh, one thing I couldn't control was the economy. And we know what happened in, in 07, 08. Well, you know, I had just diversified and got into a uh, mining gypsum in Dominican Republic and in, literally invested my life savings. I was living there for about a year. Everything was going great until the economy in the U.S., folded, my investors backed out. So August of 09, I, I came back to America, suitcase full of clothes. Um, and, you know, <laughs> again, another trying time in life. You know, you sometimes you just want to, you know, cry or, or pick up a bottle or, or, you know, you don't really know what to do. It's kind of like you're lost. You don't know what direction. And, you know, that's where I, I dug my heels back in and uh, try to find an opportunity to get back on my feet. What opportunity did you come involved in 2009? Well, it was, I came back to America in August of 2009, and uh, it was November, actually. My, my brother-in-law uh, gave me a call, and he said, hey, you know, it, I've got an opportunity I think you might be interested in. And, and to be honest with you, the type of person I am, if you have an opportunity for me to, to get up or, or make some money or profit, I'm going to look at it. I mean, I've owned probably 30 businesses. I'm not scared to get dirty. I'm not scared to try something new. In my theory in life, if you've got an opportunity, I'm going to say yes and then figure it out. So the opportunity that was brought to my attention in November of 09 was actually network marketing. And uh, I had opportunity to partner up with a, a publicly traded company that had technology that was going to revolutionize the way that people take, took care of their health with patents. 
And, you know, for me, anytime someone brought me a business opportunity, what I try to do is I take that information. I try to see if I can put those pieces together to see the full picture, to see if I could put that puzzle together. And, you know, everything was just lining up publicly traded company, 20 years of patents, you know, science peer reviewed through uh, major medical institutions. And, you know, I had an opportunity just to create awareness and benefit financially from it. So for me, it was kind of a no brainer. And I, I dove in this thing head first. That's really interesting that you talk about that. And one of the things we talk about quite often on our show is taking action. And you mentioned opportunity being brought to you. But I need to tell you that you took action on it. And most people, unfortunately, don't take action. Are you still in that same business with your brother-in-law today? Absolutely. We're, you know, we're, he's, he's top 10 in the world and I'm top 20 in the world at a company still today. And it's, uh, it's, it's been, it was the best decision of my life. Uh, I will tell you, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, mainly because there's so much personal growth that a person has to go through to create success in this type of industry, you know, and, and traditional business, you know, it's a dog eat dog world. You know, you got to fend for yourself. I got to fend for myself. And I know how to create success. I know how to work hard. I know how to make money. Um, in this type of industry, you know, you can only get so far on your own efforts. So I had to really dive into personal growth. And that's something I had never, you know, I didn't even know it was out there. I didn't know that was uh, a part of the, the people's journey in life. Um, but, you know, in this type of industry, you really have to focus on uh, helping other people create success if you want to be successful. You know, and it's, it's a different mindset. You know, in, in traditional business, you have employees that you can uh, tell what to do. And if they don't do their job, you just fire them. Well, in, in this type of industry, you're, you're dealing with a voluntary army that don't work for you. So you have to you have to learn how to motivate and inspire and, uh, you know, show them which direction to go. So it's a, it was a it was a big, big learning curve for myself. You know, it's interesting that you talk about that. I'm not incredibly familiar with network marketing from the perspective of top to bottom, but I do know that there's so much about personal development and personal growth. And with that in mind, a lot of our listeners are looking to improve different areas of their life. I was curious if you have a favorite book or something that you read during that time that really helped you. Uh, you know, John Maxwell to me is a, is a go-to that he brings a total different, uh, total different uh, outlook on the on life on the way that you think on the way that you know when obstacles come to you uh how you would look at that obstacle as is it really an obstacle or is this put in my life to make me stronger so you know john maxwell's definitely been my go-to uh there's a there's a long list of of guys that i i now go to 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 get my mind in check eric thomas you know not so much on personal growth but eric thomas you know he speaks to my soul you know and, and after eight years of being in this industry, I, I try to encourage everyone to find someone that speaks your language. We're all different. We all have a different past. Uh, we all have different obstacles. Even though we all have obstacles, they're all different. You've got to find that guy that can speak to your soul. And when he speaks, you understand it. And so Eric Thomas is kind of my go-to because, uh, you know, the way that I, I view life is, you know, I don't want to be sugar. I don't sugarcoat things. I don't want things to be sugarcoated for me. I'd rather you slap me in the face. Let's get through it. And I, I just feel like we're going to move a lot further faster. And, you know, for me, that's what Eric Thomas does for myself. No, he's he's the man, E.T., the entertainer. That's it. One of the things we talk about every day is a quote of the day. I was curious if you have a favorite quote. You know, I've got, I've got a couple that I've kind of uh, branded. But, you know, my thing is don't talk about it, be about it. Um, in life, you know, there's so many people that want change, but they are just not willing to do uh, what it takes to make it happen. I feel that we as humans, we're all we're all equal, man. We're all the only thing that separates us, me and you, and you know me and uh, the most successful people in life are the choices that we make. And you know everybody wants a better life. Uh, sometimes people justify their life's okay, but at the end of the day, we all want more. Um, and, and it's a big separation. Are you willing to do what it takes? Or are you just going to talk about change? Um, so, you know, when you're in a business of, uh, mentoring people and helping people out, you know, one of the main reasons that I was attracted to this, this industry was, you know, it's not just about providing for my family and, and making money and putting a, a, the big house over their head and driving big cars and making big money. You can do that stuff in, in traditional business, 
But what this industry offers is that time back to enjoy your family. So, you know, for me, um, I think, that, you know, it, it, you learn, obviously, what f- drove me to do the things I was doing was gaining the time back with my family. And I will help anybody and I will travel the world to help you. But I got to know that you're willing to, to step up and uh, back up what you're saying. And that's why I just came up with, you know, don't talk about it, be about it. I want to see what you do, not what you say. No, that's awesome. And so many people talk about things and think about things and want to do things, but the significant difference is going ahead and actually taking action. So if you could give the 20-year-old version of yourself one piece of advice, what would it have been? Um, To grow earlier. You know, at 20 years of age, you know, I was having a lot of success and I see this all the time. When, When people are having success, they start to think they have it figured out. Um, and maybe you do, maybe you had an edge, maybe you figured out faster than someone else, but I will tell you this, the day that you think you're too smart to continue to grow, uh, is the day you're going to stop growing. And at 20 years of age, I'll tell you, I had, I I was, I was kicking butt, man. I was, I was achieving a lot of things that most people, um, were not achieving in life at 20 years old. I was making over, you know, a hundred to $200,000 a year. And you know, the, the, the older, more mature people in life. I was, I was, I, I had more than them. So I think I had it figured out. And I will tell you, I, you got to keep your ego in check. So I would have humbled myself earlier. Uh, this industry of, of network marketing has definitely uh, made my, made me more humble uh, to realizing I don't have everything figured out. And, you know, I, I learn stuff from people that are joining the business every day. So if, if you kind of open your mind to always learning to become better, uh, man, if I had that mindset at 20, I'd be a heck of a lot further than where I'm at today at 36. No, I'm glad you said that. It reminds me of a quote, and I don't know who said it, but when you quit learning, you quit earning. That's it, for sure. Here's another question, a little bit different. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh, man, that's a, that's a touchy one. Um, my dad was my best friend at 14, and um, one of the things that I, I feel gave me a benefit through life was, um, he empowered me. He was until, until I was 14, um, every, everything that came into my life, every obstacle, he turned it into a positive. He, he really, really built my belief. He gave me confidence. He, he gave me posture and that confidence and posture has really been a huge tool for me and who I am today. Uh, I'd love to to obviously go back and and have dinner and, and catch up on a lot of things, but you know a lot of things that I do and persevere and persist on it, it's it's going. Hey man, I got to make him proud. So you know I, he, he's not a famous writer and he's not a famous motivator, but uh, he was definitely my biggest mentor. No, that's awesome, and I think uh, I think you would definitely be proud of all the success that you've had throughout your life. I appreciate that. Wanted to ask you: um, Is there anything exciting you're working on that you'd like to share with our listeners? You know, I, you know, I, honestly, the 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 company I'm with, you know, we're we're definitely unique to the space. I mean, I will tell you this: in network marketing, uh, you can have success with any company. I mean, there's there's unbelievable products and services in this space. Uh, I'm a, a huge um, com- promoter of the industry as a whole. Um, but what we've got our hands on is definitely unique because it's changing the way that people are going to take care of their health. And, you know, the, the, the way that I understand what we have, have our hands on is, you know, technology is changing every single day. Uh, we're, we're, we use cell phones instead of pagers, but, you know, pagers, they served a great purpose. Uh, you know, we, we, we use Spotify and Pandora. We don't buy tapes and CDs anymore. So we just live in a world that technology is changing. It's growing. And as technology changes, we adapt and that's what we're a part of. You know, we've got 20 years of patents on where medicine's heading. We, we literally have a a technology that activates the body rather than supplements the body. And I have the privilege to go around the the country and educate doctors because uh, this technology, the doctors, they don't know about it yet. So it's pretty awesome to sit down with cardiologists and family practitioners and, you know, you name it and teach them about nutrigenomics, the ability to activate the body rather than supplement the body. So when you when you sit back, and I think we are all excited about technology changing, but when you really comprehend that you finally get to be a part of technology changing, 
uh, not just being a part of creating awareness, but from a financial side and the position it looks like where your family, you know, setting your family up. And it's, it's unbelievable. It keeps me up at night. I've been, been involved with, with this for, you know, almost eight years, November of 09. And it, it's still every single day when I talk about, it, I get goosebumps because it's, it's surreal to be a part of something so big, so early. You know, it's un- it's unfortunate that you really are not interested or have any passion for your job. That's that's too bad. <laughs> that's right, man. That's right. <laughs> no, it's it's exciting to to hear about it because you do have passion about it. And so many people just punch the clock. It's the nine to fiver, and they do it for a paycheck or they do it to retire at this age. But you've obviously got a ton of passion in what you're doing, and I think it's pretty interesting listening to some of the things you shared about the body and what you guys have patents for. It's definitely definitely interesting, and I'll have to take a little little look about it myself. So I wanted to ask you if, if you have any parting words you'd like to share with our listeners. You know, we, I, I will say this. You know, we, we all have struggles in life. My best advice to you um, as an entrepreneur out there trying to make some things happen is we all have obstacles. We all have struggles. And I think it's important for us to accept it and understand that you're not weird. You're not slow. It's not your problem. It's completely normal. It's completely normal to have hurdles in life that you have to overcome. I mean, that that's what separates successful people and unsuccessful people is they had challenges too. But they just made a choice of change. And I want every one of you to look in the mirror and go, you know what? I want more and I'm in control. And I'm not going to let anyone or anything predict my future. I'm in control and I'm going to I'm going to make things happen and make change and be willing to change. Humble yourself to change, to become better. Um, we, we hear so much. It's, it's programmed in our brains. You're either first or you're last. You know what? I'm completely against it. I will be number two all day if number one is a great person that's 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 knocking down um, the forest to make good things happen. I'll follow that track all day, every day. That's what life's about. It's about being passionate about what you're doing. It's about waking up in the morning wanting to be better than yesterday. Um, you know, so I will just tell you, whatever you're going through in life, just know it's okay. Just know it's normal. But then accept the fact that you've got to do something about it. Find someone that is similar, that's went through the similar obstacle. You know, Mel Robbins is powerful when she teaches the five second rule. You know, in life, every time something comes to our brain, you've got five seconds to act on it. If you don't act within the first five seconds, every second after the first five, you're going to start talking yourself out of it. So, you know, I encourage you to to look in the mirror and be proud of, of what you see. And every day, it's you know, it's it's an obstacle. It's just going to make you stronger. So turn the positive to negative, and you know, create whatever life you've got to live. Don't go through life thinking you're going to find yourself. Go through life to to create who you really are. That's some great piece of advice. And last question, I promise, is the easiest one. What's the best way for our listeners to connect or follow you? Um, I've got a website, freddgraves.com. I've got my information on there. You know, I'm, the social media aspect I'm new to. Uh, I'm not too savvy in it. I've, I've just been really focusing on building relationships and helping people where I can help them. You know, if that interests you, whether it's in this industry or goals in life, my passion now is this. You know, in life, uh, I used to think success was how big my house was and how much money I made. And I realized true success is when you can achieve the goals that you have in life, but really go help other people achieve their goals. And once they achieve them, just know that you had a little piece of it. So, you know, whatever you're going through in life, whatever goals you have, uh, I love helping people. And, uh, you know, that's the best way to get a hold of me. No, that's awesome. And again, I truly appreciate your time. You shared some great stuff, and I definitely will put your website in our show notes. So I wanted to thank you for your time and hopefully look forward to speaking with you soon. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Chris. To sum up our theme of the day, opportunity, Fred took a phone call back in 2009 from his brother-in-law and he turned that opportunity into huge success. Fred has dealt with his issues throughout his life, starting with the loss of his father when he was 14, and then he made his first million by the age of 24 and had to build it all back up again. When faced with adversity, Fred rolled up his sleeves and put in the work. Today Fred has built a career where he is a top 20 salesman in his business throughout the world. In his parting words, Fred shared some really key points. He discussed opportunities and how when they arrive, he says yes first 
and figures the rest out later. He said not to talk about it, but to be about it. Fred shared that every single day he tries to wake up fired and make today better than yesterday. So today's call to action is very simple. What are you going to do today that's going to make it better than yesterday? Will you coast today based upon yesterday's successes, or will you use yesterday to motivate you to be even better today? I challenge each and every one of you to make today better than yesterday as you go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.